So why do we go with a two-wheel vehicle? Well, I feel that two-wheel vehicles uh, provide a lot more mobility to the system uh, than a four-wheel vehicle. If you look at the Baja 500, the uh, fastest teams or fastest you know, uh, entries are motorcycles. And they cost about 10 times less than the uh, trophy trucks that they compete against. So if you look at uh, you know, the whole surface of the world, you have four times more surface area you can travel when you're on a motorcycle than when you're on a car. Those areas are also the areas where you do want to send autonomous vehicles because they're likely to be more dangerous and in more remote areas. So to me, it makes perfect sense that uh, you know, we're building a chassis that we can take the best software from all the other teams and the best sensors out there and work with them on integrating and having a vehicle that potentially would be superior to anything that any single one of us could build by themselves. So to keep a motorcycle up, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people think that we shift mass around, we have like spinning gyros and things like that. That's not true. We ride it just like a human does. There's a steering actuator on the top here, which allows us to uh, modify the steering angle. So basically, if you're driving, you start to fall to the left, you steer left. That makes you turn to the left, and then you get centripetal acceleration to put you back up to the right. And you're monitoring that in real time and making small adjustments, and you stay bounced. Uh, now, to do, the, to do obstacle avoidance, we have two cameras on there that see in stereo, kind of like the eyes do, except that these are about eight inches apart as opposed to four inches for human eyes. We also have navigation systems, like we have a GPS unit on board. We have uh, inertial measurement units that measure how the vehicle is oriented. By understanding the motorcycle dynamics to do the navigation, we understand when a motorcycle is going to crash before it crashes. We're actually measuring dynamically how the vehicle is stabilizing itself. That has real world applications in the sense that we can develop a side airbag that might help you uh, in the event of a crash where you're not crashing into things but you're crashing because you slipped because the oil uh, patch on the road you didn't see or it's dark at night, you hit dry ice or things like that. So that has a lot of safety applications there. The other application that we have to having a, a motorcycle that can drive itself is that you can really tune certain parameters like suspension, tire, braking, so we can give a quantitative measurements to different motorcycle platforms and saying, well, this uh, BMW bike performs very well under these conditions, but under these conditions, we only give it a 7 out of 10 for stability versus this Honda gets a 6 out of 10 under these conditions, but you know, in rain conditions, it's very good. So this is a way of getting quantitative measurements so we can actually remove the human element out of testing a vehicle, kind of like crash testing for motorcycles.